going back to the digital inequity point, still maintaining absolutely a multimodal approach uh, to mitigate against that digital inequity. So for those that choose not to go online or can't go online, maintaining those other routes for access, such as in-person or telephone, um, uh, but the idea being that with more people choosing an online route, because that redesign of the entire system has changed to improve processes and workflow um, to give them a, a good experience, it frees up then the phone lines for those that can't go online and um, so they're not having to wait. We do need to also kind of adopt some of these things um, across the ecosystem and 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 really in, invest in that and buy into that but also um, balance the needs of all of the kind of and, the, and, and recognize the reality of what there is and what works now and how could we make something really pragmatic um, and deliver benefits to people and outcomes uh, you know on the, on the front lines and also to staff um, you know in the in the short term uh, I think there are very few people like myself and Tommy who are working at a, na at a national level around the, the digital agenda for social care. And I think we need to think about how we address that. I think we, we've we got in the health service, we have to overcome what I call the other. Um, you know, so, social care is the other. <laughs> uh, it's not the NHS. And we, we have to overcome that.